I got a bunch of kits. I think I'm going to put one of these together. This looks like a LED hourglass. Um, I don't know what this is. Some kind of 555. Oscillator, but... Oh, it's a, some kind of frequency generator, it looks like. 555 timer. Uh, it's got an output, and then these must be jumpers for different waves. And they get filtered through resistors and should be some caps. He has a caps, caps and resistor networks over here. That might be fun to play with. Um, I got this, uh, this is like a roulette LED wheel. With, um, some surface mount and some through hole. Uh, this is a, I believe this is a metal detector. This is uh, just an SMD soldering kit. Some of it does stuff, some of it's just to, for uh, practice. Yeah, soldering practice. But the circuit in the middle, I think, actually works. Um, it's a 555 five, five timer and a shift register, or a, it might be just a shift register, and it probably just goes around these LEDs practically in a circle. I think the rest of these are just um, for practice. So it's just the SMD, SMD only. This is um, electronic dice, maybe. Yeah, it's an electronic dice kit. Uh, some through hole. Uh, it's mostly SMD and through hole LEDs. No, this is a. I don't know. What, this is like a light chaser. Looks like an LED chaser. And um, LEDs are through hole, everything else seems to be SMD. Uh, this is some kind of timer output. Timer board, relay, uh, delay board, something like that, I think it is. I don't think it uses uh, some kind of charge. No, there's no capacitors in there. Oh, this is a photo cell. Photo cell, that's what it is. This is a photo cell, it's got a little tiny little board in there. This is like a photo cell trigger, real uh, transistor trigger. Something like that. Transistor switch. And this is a clock. Uh, I think I'm gonna put the clock together. Next time I'll just pick one at random, but today I wanted to pick a, a, a through hole. I didn't really want to do SMD today. Nope. Almost lost that capacitor. All right. So normally you should have probably have a something to put this stuff in. Yeah, I got. I'll just use that for now. We've got a socket, a little circuit board, one-sided circuit board. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. A dip socket, some kind of dip package. It looks like an uh, at uh, yeah, it's an Atmel microcontroller. I'm not sure what kind. So this is Atmel 8T89C20524PU. So that's pretty standard. It's a pretty common microcontroller. And there's um, 
It's a four digit clock. It's probably red. They're the cheapest. They came with this nice foam so the pins don't get bent. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump these out into a, like a smaller tray. And we'll leave the um, we'll leave the terminals and the switches to last. And they don't need the buttons. Button covers. They use a resistor single inline. This is a SIP network. It's a bunch of resistors in one package. Oops, and this is garbage. That's garbage. All right, so we'll start with. Um, I don't know. What should we start with? I guess we start with this socket. Pin one. Go ahead and start with the socket. It's probably the flattest um, item. Go ahead and I'm going to use a oops. Make sure you put the pin one notch where it belongs. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Make sure you don't drop it. I'm just going to do do that. When you're doing through hole, it's easier just to have the board flopping around and use something to hold it. Um, otherwise, you are going to be. I mean, this is a single sided board. It's, it's going to be easier just to have something I can just grab the board with. Normally, I would put it in a holder like this um, if we're doing something, you know that's not as through hole or double sided. All right, so. Got a Hacko FX888D. Just got a, a little wedge tip. I use uh, the brass usually. I'll get that out of the ring. I almost always use brass cleaner. Uh, now and then your tip will get really dirty and you'll just need some uh, some water, some sponge action. Is there even a pin there? You know what? I have a feeling these are going to be. Oh, very hard to solder because they're probably dirty. Actually, I'm going to have to go in from the side to make sure that it stays. Hmm. It's not working out very well. Let's see what else I got. A lot of people just use blue tack. I, I just don't deal with blue tack. I just don't. I'm not a fan. That'll work. These have been my go-to clamps recently. Uh, these are like, I think these are for removing ticks or something from dogs. Ordered a bunch of them. They're real cheap. Should I do a uh, 2X? The problem is this isn't heavy enough to hold this. It feels like my iron's not hot enough. I did just change the tip. Maybe it's not tight enough. 
No, it's in there. Hmm. I think my power supply. I think my power supply on my soldering iron's going out or something. I gotta check check it. It's been making noises. Uh, my hacko has been making noises uh, lately. Make sure it's tinning right. Yeah, yeah. I don't need flux. This is board's not too bad. It's pretty clean. You know, if you're getting some really old tarnished stuff, you might want to just throw some flux on there or clean it first with alcohol. Um, but I really don't don't care. I think this is lead, unleaded. This is unleaded solder. It's just I might have to turn my temperature up. But the worst thing you can do when soldering is to have a board that um. Hopefully, that's, hopefully it sounds much better now. You don't really want your board flapping around because it's gonna it's hard to get um it's hard to get the um heat to transfer, you know. So you really want something a little something to hold it down. Yeah, that's gonna be a little better. Probably gonna get me a stick vise. Just spend the money on a stick vise and you know do it to it. So much easier is to solder when you have some kind of support. Yeah, so that's the problem there. It's You don't really want the board flopping around. It's too hard to work with. So I'll show you what I do usually in a second. I mean, I don't usually I don't usually solder like this. I uh, have a um, board holder, PCB holder. It brings it up to my eye level closer, uh, but it might be harder to film on. I'll go ahead and switch to that right now, actually. And that's normally how I would assemble a board. I would usually use one of these. You can see it's going to mess with the camera, but it's going to be so much closer. But you know, for small boards, you sometimes don't want to break this out. But it does make everything so much easier. And this is real cheap, it's like 13 bucks. And then you can see how easy it is now to deal with um, soldering a small board. All you gotta do is tack it down and then you, problem with this is you can't spin it around a lot. So you have to kind of leave your board stationary and attack it from different angles, so. It's getting a little gummy, I need to. And then I think these jaws are not, um, I don't think these jaws are high temp either, so you, I think you can melt them, so that's another problem. And I might 3D print something else that's, well, anything 3D print is going to melt too, I guess. Unless you can get some nylon ones printed. I don't think that one soldered very good. There was a little gunk on that one. So, see if I can zoom in closer. Yeah, I mean, that's too close. What's the point of that? You don't need that. So, well, I got that socket in. Took us forever, but, you know, just dilly dallying. No hurry. Looks like we got, um, well that's interesting, I thought there was two, no there's only one, one transistor, oops, helps if you put it the right way, I'm just trying to bend the uh, leads right now, just pop it in there like that, just flip it over, tension should hold it in, you know, 
not, you bend the leads a little bit. And then what else we got? It looks like we got uh, electrolytic capacitor that probably goes over there. I'll put that in later since it's blocked. This resistor network. Uh, I guess you gotta figure out that that's pin one, since that's the that's that's the square's got that block right there. So I'm assuming that's pin one, and this is probably pin one because it's got a dot. So we're gonna put it like that. And um, it's just gonna hold itself in there for now. And we'll just tack one of these on there. That should be good enough. I'm gonna move this around like this. Yeah. It's gonna be easier for me. Actually, this way is gonna be easier. If you're doing a, you, you really want to do it like this, but the way I'm kind of under this camera is kind of a pain. If you want to go down a row, whatever's easier for you, righty or lefty, when you're soldering stuff, especially headers. That one looks like it's not got any copper around it. No, that's weird. Huh. So they're just not using that last one? doesn't even have copper around the hole. That's strange. It's a bad PCB. I mean, it... It's uh, not a very good practice there. They just leave uh, no copper around a hole. Alright, we've got three capacitors. It looks like um, 104... Probably this one right here, the bigger one, 104. I think that's uh, what? 10 microfarad, 10 uh, microfarad? I don't know my resistors actually. All right, capacitors, codes. And then there's two other ones. There, uh, there's one right there. This is 30p. So almost these are both going to be the same. So you, you don't got to worry about figuring these out. These little ones. Uh, and then there's a 10k resistor here. They gave me two, and they were taped together. So I mean. Oh, wait. 10K, 1 mega ohm. They just gave me two of the same resistors. Hmm. That's interesting. What would you need a 12 mega? Is that the timer? Is that for the crystal? Oh, that's the crystal. What am I doing? That's probably the crystal. Dur -dur -dur -dur. I thought that was a resistor over there. 12 megahertz. I was going to say 12 mega ohm. What the point? What the heck is that? Jeez. So it looks like, oh, maybe there's a, resi there's a resistor over here underneath the, um, there we go. Over there. Um... I think I'm just going to try to do all these at the same time. Oops. These look like they're awfully close together, so I'm going to have to pinch these a little bit. Yeah. Those holes are a little too close. Alright, so... We're going to go ahead and bend these guys. 
Pen these guys. Pen these guys. These guys. Oh, forgot to bend those ones. That's all right. We'll find it on the floor. Sometimes you see that where the solder is sticking more to your iron than it's going to the joint, then that means that you need to clean your iron. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, all right, what did I drop? It looks like I dropped a resistor. And it's right here. Of course, I ran it over. All right, so do 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 do. I'm gonna pull these up a little higher so that they stand up straight. I don't want them flopping that way. I want them to go down away from the chip. See, these annular rings are tiny from these boards. I don't know why. For, for the crystal, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold the crystal because I want it to be in there pretty good. I want it to be flush with the board. Should be, um, I don't know. I guess I'll give some um, other than soldering advice. I mean, I don't know what else to go over here. Let's talk about this LED clock. I mean, looks pretty simple. It's, um, I'm gonna guess these resistors are probably current limiting resistors for the LED because the microcontroller pin has a certain limit how much current it can usually pump. It's not very much, usually usually less than 10 milliamps or somewhere around there. Some of them um, can do about 20 volts, uh, some TTL circuits and stuff like that, but I mean, not 20 volts, um, 20 milliamps, but you don't wanna, you, your stuff's gonna overheat anyway. So you usually don't wanna do that anyway. It looks like there was a buzzer in here. I must have must have fell out of the bag. I'll have to get another buzzer to put in there. I got plenty of buzzers though, so that's not a problem. Oops. Get over there. Let's get stuck on the other pins. Did I miss anything? I think it's all done. All right, so now we just snip some things off. Make sure you have eye protection on. I wear eyeglasses, so if not, you could you can um, usually turn this over and put it. These aren't going to pop because they're very small. There goes one. Yeah, you usually want eye protection on when you're cutting. Tip, tip. See, last thing you want um, this is something to hit your eyeball that's shaped like a spear. Um, you can blink fast, but you'd be amazed how slow your blink rate uh, response is when something's traveling at you. Especially when you hear the sound. By the time you hear the sound, it's already in your eye. So, that's that. Sometimes I'll even... You're not supposed to do this, but... I'll clip the solder tips off of some of these if they're sharp. If I know they're gonna be taller than everything. You can always hit it with the soldering iron afterwards, but you never wanna do that. You never wanna do that when you're in an in actual, um, you know, if you're producing something because you'll create weak joints. You can crack the joint and it's, it could fail catastrophically if it's something important. 
Um, let me find a buzzer. And I'm gonna put that capacitor in there. Um, let's see what kind of buzzers I got. Great big bag of buzzers, these cheap ones. They don't sound very good, but I don't know what else to do because I don't know where the rest of them are. I have um, I have some buzzers somewhere else that are nicer, but I don't know where they're at right now. Just spin this around so I can get to those. Well, now I'm gonna have to take it off again. This is a plus is marked clearly on here. I'm probably gonna take this off because it's gonna be loud and annoying. Yeah, these don't fit like the same, the original. Oh well. Gotta hope these aren't buzzers. This might be passive though. What if I took a passive buzzer out of here? I think this is it right here. Mm, let's do the buzzer last. Let's uh, do the buzzer after we know it's working. So this is a capacitor and it is polarized. So yeah, you got a negative band right there, a white band. And here they marked positive, so positive is all gonna be no longer lead right here. Usually, this will have a, like a half moon shading or a, or something something to match the capacitor. Usually, they don't put a capacitor with a plus sign. Um, and a lot of times, you can tell where that's gonna go. I think that's right. We'll see if that's right. That looks like that might be some power filtering or um, some extra power for when the LEDs are switching. These hackos are getting a little worn. They're very worn. I've been using these for just everything. I have another pair of snips that I only use for these were going to be my pair that I only use for leads, but apparently I did something else with it and damaged them. I don't remember what it was. But I'm going to order some more because I damaged those already, even though I wasn't supposed to. Alright, so the only thing left is the buttons and the uh, LED. So we can probably put the buttons on here like this. And then we'll just put the display on on the table because it's fell flat. Which way do these switches go? Up and down? Up and down, yeah. So like, side to side, like that. Which way do these switches go? They connect up across, like that, right? Why do they connect like that? Yeah, maybe they connect like that. They must be back and forth. These are tough to get in sometimes. They got their everything they're shaped to grab the board. So they're shaped like claws. So you just gotta kind of compress them a little bit sometimes to get them in there. And these are gonna take a little bit more um, solder because they're much bigger 
connections. Yeah, see, they're a little gunky because switches are laying a bin somewhere and they don't they get oxidized. But you just keep hitting it with the iron and enough solder in it. The flux in it will fix it up. If not, use some buy some uh, you know liquid or gel flux, paste flux. All right. Let's put the connector on there. I don't know what the connector is for. Probably power. <laughs> I would guess this is for power. You probably need that. For this, I'm just going to hold this. Um, I'm just going to hold it and solder it. Oops. I didn't see which one was positive or negative because it was labeled underneath, wasn't it? Well, this is positive, which means this is negative. So before I forget, I'm going to do. Uh, Go ahead and mark that one as negative. All right. Oh, that's my belly. Hungry. least is the uh, this one um, hmm. now it's got a dot there I'm assuming this is the way it goes Check all these, they're all bit. Jeez. All right, so if this goes, is there a mark on here? I don't see any mark on here. How do you know which pin is one? Hmm. I would guess upright. I would guess this goes like this. Well, no, maybe not, because the button's over here. How do I know where this goes? How do I know which one's the anode? Common anode or cathode? Looks like they're multiplexing it. So I really can't tell if this is a common anode or... Hmm. All these pins look like they go straight to the microcontroller. Hmm. That's tough. <laughs> this is going to be a problem. How do I figure which way this goes? I'll have to pull this listing up and see. What pin one is? Well, that's kind of so shitty, you know? Should be an easy build and uh, you wind up 
stuck on something like this because there's no instructions. You don't get any instructions with these. I'm going to try to find it on eBay. Here's one. Here's a picture of it assembled. Yes, buttons go on the bottom. Good thing, because I would have done it the other way without even paying attention. Pin 1 looks like it's there. Shouldn't that be pin 1? I don't know. But it seems to go... Seems to go that way. Although I don't know how you're supposed to get to the buttons when this thing's in the way. That's kind of dopey. Alright. Oh, no, that's bigger than that. Oh, shoot. It looks like they're directly driving um, the LEDs from the microcontroller. Oops. Ugh, stop moving. And then they're setting up a you know crystal oscillator for the microcontroller. Uh, the transistor must be to drive the buzzer because you can't switch a load like that from the microcontroller. It's a it's an inductive load, a piezo is. It's like a giant capacitor, not a giant, but it's like a capacitor. So it wants to discharge and it takes a little bit to charge it. So to make a should I leave those on there or cut them off? Leave them on there for now. All right, let's um, put this guy in there. Uh, you want to make sure your pins are lined up. I don't have a pin. I don't have a pin uh, straightener, but you could just um, really get a feel for how how gentle you need to be when you bend them. It takes practice but you should be able to you know just do multiple reps <laughs> bend it as little as possible and just do it a couple times don't try to bend it once because it will just it will completely bend and and screw up your pins all right so um let me find out what voltage this is probably supposed to take Start off at three and then go to five. I mean, I don't really know. Let's see if this says anything better. It requires twelve volts. Five volts. Sorry. Yeah, five volts. So what should we do? Should we do a? Uh, I'll just turn. I'll use a. Um, I use USB. I'm gonna use USB because it's, my, it's much quieter than my um, power supply, and I just need a um, USB. Where is it? I have one right here. We'll just do that, and then we'll just get some. I got two of these. Not really best to use the same color for both, but whatever. That's what I got. It's what I got in front of me. Very bad practice. And then uh, 
we'll need a screwdriver. Flathead screwdriver, of course. <sighs> Let's see. There's the small. There it is. Last one, of course. What was the last one? This is a uh, ground. Be gentle on these cheap Chinese connectors, they will break immediately. We got something there. It's like instead of flashing 12 o'clock, we got 12.59. Let's see if there's a beep when I put a Must just be for alarm. So it looks like um, I'll have to get a lens for this. 12, 1300. Timer. It's like some kind of counter. It's flickering like that. Off. This must be the alarm. 24 hour off, on. I'm gonna have to find instructions for this. E, F, G, H, I. Uh, is, there mul is there that many alarms? If I hold both of them. A, Eight C zero. Oh, this must be a menu. Okay, so there's the time to hold to change the time. I'm going to hold that one down. Eight o'clock. 801. I don't know what this is doing. Let's see if we're setting the time. I don't even know what time it is, but. <laughs> I have no idea how to use this. It works though. I shouldn't say hours. 16, 16. So I did change the minutes. If I hold this one down. What's it doing? Switching between time and seconds. A, eight, C, off, G, H. Is that the hour? That must be the hour. Um, I don't know if that's the second or the date. I don't think that's the time because it was. Let's see what it goes up to. This is probably minutes. Now. 
was in minutes. That's the alarm. Okay, so that's the alarm probably. So hold both buttons and now I should be able to put the minutes in. I don't know how that that's an M, I guess. That's so I don't, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Alright, let's do 51. Press on off. This goes back to the other menu. H. Fifty one, fifteen, sixteen, fifty one. So I changed the minutes. So that's the hour. What the hell? This makes no sense. Hour. Minutes. Uh, I don't know what that means. Something on or off. Something else on or off. Something else on or off. H is, that must be the alarm. And the alarm minutes. Oh, it's got a time right now. So I got a time set. <laughs> um, and then I guess the other ones is the alarm. So I was thinking maybe there was like a double hold. There doesn't seem to be. There just seems to be one menu. This button switches between the, two, the seconds and the whatever. Holding it down does nothing. Pressing this one does nothing. Holding it down goes into this menu. And you can go through these five options. If you hold two down, it goes through all the menus. Well, it's easy enough to play with. Maybe I'll figure out what I can do with it. Set an alarm up once a day to do something. And uh, trigger it from the uh, microcontroller output or something. Or I'll uh, replace this and use it as something else. So, it works. I'm sure the timekeeping is terrible. So, well, that was it for today. Till next time.